Hey guys, Omaha here. Today I'm going over 15 tips you probably didn't know in Helldivers 2. Now for this list, I tried to go over some tips that I didn't think most people would know. And if you have anything to add, please let me know down in the comments. We'd all love to hear what kind of tips you guys can offer. Anyways, I don't want to waste time with a super long intro, so let's get right into it. Tip number one, the prone stance. Prone stance has many hidden uses not outright stated in the game. First one being increased stealth. So whether you're sneaking up to an enemy nest or automaton factory, or you're just waiting for an enemy to patrol the path you by, it's extremely useful in both solo and high difficulty mode. Second thing it provides is increased stamina regen. Now I found this to be around 30 to 50% faster. So you'll see on screen here, I have a side-by-side -side comparison so you can notice how much faster it is. But I find that walking or jogging so you can stay on the move may make up the difference here. And then lastly, reduce explosive damage. So you'll see from my first grenade, it took roughly 20% of my HP and damage. And then for the second grenade, you'll see it outright kills me at roughly the same distance. And I've actually had this save me multiple times from things like the Eagle 500 kg bomb or orbital stratagems, whether friendly or my own. For tip number two, we have stealth. And most players, I'm sure, don't really even know that they have stealth in this game. But it's actually extremely powerful, especially on solo runs and higher difficulty runs where you want to be avoiding combat as much as possible. Now you'll see in this clip here, I'm shooting and moving and the enemies are exploring the location where they heard the gunshot come from. So this can be used to lure enemies away from objectives. Now stealth's only going to get even better when they add suppressors to this game. It's been leaked and seemingly confirmed by the devs to come at a later date. But even in its current form on higher difficulty runs, especially if you run any form of smoke, you can break line of sight and then re-enter stealth. And yeah, it's just going to make it a lot easier on higher difficulties. If you're in prolonged engagements, it just gets overwhelming at times. Extraction is available. For our next tip, there's actually a drop radial menu in this game. If you hold down X on the keyboard or down on the D-pad for controller, you can pull up this menu that lets you drop different equipment you have on you. So you can drop your backpack, you can drop your support weapon, you can drop an objective if you're carrying one, and you can even drop samples. Now, another tip I have that goes alongside this one is dropping your samples at the extraction site. So your samples don't actually despawn if they're left on the ground. So one pro tip, especially on higher difficulty modes, if you're passing by the extraction zone, you can drop your samples there and then pick them up later on. So if you die, you don't have to run around and find them or even dropping your samples for one person to carry. That way, if your whole squad dies, you don't have to go to four different locations to pick up the samples. You can just go to one location. For our next tip, we have the reticle always on setting. Normally in this game, your reticle doesn't appear until you zoom in, whether with a gun in your hand or a grenade and there's a setting you can turn on to keep it always on which makes throwing grenades a lot easier so if you go into options down to hud and then you go down to reticle visibility you'll see it set to dynamic by default you just toggle that to visible and then your reticle will always be visible so it just makes throwing grenades into nests a lot easier you can just throw it off the rip without zooming in first for our next tip we have the anti-material rifle against the automatons now this thing isn't very good against the terminids but when you're playing against the automatons it's definitely slept on and it's very powerful if you're aiming for the weak points on the automatons usually the head or the red glowing lights you can one or two shot every single automaton you'll probably notice this requires a lot more skill than something like the railgun even the giant hulk here you see i aim at the red laser and it goes down in two shots you have ignited the Next, I have a couple grenade tips for you guys. The first being you can actually cook grenades in this game. Here you see I throw the high explosive grenade without cooking it. It takes about three seconds to go off. And then I cook it for a couple seconds and throw it and it blows up right away. And then finally, if you hold it too long, you'll obviously blow yourself up and die. So if you go into the armory, you can see each grenade has a fuse time down there at the bottom. But the high explosive grenade has a fuse time of three and a half seconds. And the frag grenade has a fuse time of 2.4 seconds. You can also destroy automaton factories easier by waiting for the doorway to open and throwing a grenade in there rather than throwing it through the top vent. Although I haven't been able to get this to work with impact grenades. And then the next thing is the impact grenades are by far the best way to kill the bile spewers. If you throw it in an orange or even the armored green bile spewers, the guaranteed kill. It doesn't even have to land directly on them as long as it's nearby. It'll instantly kill them. Next, we have samples and the best places to find them. So firstly, your common samples usually take the form of these cases here, either blue or red, or as these little yellow green mushrooms. And these can basically be found at any point of interest on the map, whether the minor points of interest with a little diamond shape or any objective and even the extraction zone. So basically anything notable Dropping on the map, you're likely North to face. find common samples. Next is the rare samples, and they often take the form of these rocks here with the little geode sticking out. And typically these are found at the primary objectives and the secondary objectives on the map. They also less commonly take the form of these yellow flowers here. And I find these to typically be a little more random where they're placed, but they typically stand out and they have an audio cue to go with them. And finally, for the super samples, these are actually extremely easy to find. As you're exploring, if you look around and you see a rock shaped like this, it's going to look like this every single time. It has marks on it that look like lightning. You go up to one of those and it's going to have all the super samples for the entire mission. Unless they end up changing something in the future, you should be able to find all the samples for the mission under one of these rocks. Our next tip has to do with weapon modes or attachments. 
If you hold down the reload button on your controller, it's square, or on PC, it's usually R. You can pull up a little menu. It can change how the gun functions. So the machine gun has three different fire rates. You can go from 630 RPM to 760 or even 900. And 900 obviously shoots faster, but it's a little less accurate. And then if you pick up the anti-material rifle, it has three different zooms for its scope going from 50 to 100 to 200 meters. So each weapon will have different things that it can do. Some other examples are the railgun with its safe or unsafe mode, and the auto cannon can go full auto or semi-auto. Next tip is a little more well-known, but if you see these health pods lying around the map, you shoot it with any weapon, it'll count down for about three seconds and then set off a massive nuke explosion. So this is extremely useful, obviously, for taking out giant threats, or if you run a train of enemies, you can bait them into that and finish them all off. Next tip is moving faster with the seed artillery shells. If you see higher level players constantly dropping these shells, it's because you move significantly faster while doing so. Now, I'm not the best at this, and I've seen people do it a lot better than me, but even still, it's faster than walking really slow while carrying the shell. I've heard people say you can actually drop the shell above you onto your shoulders and then just run to the cannon, but I haven't actually been able to do that myself, so I don't know if that's true or not. But either way, this saves you quite a bit of time on this objective. The next tip I have has to do with the ammo resupply pack and the stims in this game. Typically, people assume the ammo supply pack is only for others and the stims are only for yourself, and that isn't the case. So to resupply yourself, all you have to do is press 5 on the keyboard or press down on the d-pad and then you will resupply your grenades ammo and stims and i find this to work really well especially paired with the grenade launcher for taking out nests and with the stims it's pretty straightforward if you have an injured teammate and they don't have any stims left you can run up to them and press x on the controller or i think it's f on the keyboard to stem them with one of your stims for our next tip if you're out exploring and you find minor places of interest with crates that look like this they can be different colors. You can actually open these up with a grenade or even the arc thrower. And I think the anti-material rifle works as well. And you'll usually find super credits as well as requisition slips inside. Our next tip, using enemies for your benefit. So enemies actually have friendly fire in this game. Two examples I can think of are chargers. You can have them charge into other enemies and damage and kill them. And they can also charge into bug holes and destroy them for you if you don't have any explosives. It can be a little bit risky, but it's a good last ditch effort if you run out of explosives to use. And then the other example I can think of is the Bile Titan's acid spewing ability can actually kill chargers as well as other terminids. This one's also a little bit niche and a little bit risky, but it can save your life. I've had them kill chargers on multiple occasions, and they can even kill other Bile Titans using this ability. All right, our last tip is probably the most well-known, so I saved it for the end. That timer on the top right, once that reaches zero, it doesn't mean you're out of luck. It basically means you have two more minutes until the ship is coming, and you won't be able to use any stratagems at all during this time, and that includes revives. It's generally recommended to leave before the timer expires. Otherwise, if you die, you're basically dead. And that's going to wrap it up on 15 tips you probably didn't know in Helldivers 2. Catch me on Twitch at Omaha01 and TikTok at Omaha Gaming. If you guys have some more tips that you think people probably don't know, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.